T3's got three standouts for you from Panthers training camp. These are three players that we continue, I think, to keep our eyes on, our ears, like our interests that just continue clearly to stand out, right? And I'd like to start with rookie Jonathan Mingo, right? We got a Panthers wide receiver group that looks very different from it has in the past. DJ Moore is now in Chicago. We now have replaced him with a DJ Shark. We also have brought in a veteran, Adam Thielen. And uh, you've also had all eyes, at our, a lot of hype and anticipation around Terrence Marshall Jr. There's a lot of question marks around this position group, but also some talent there at the same time. The Carolina Panthers went out and John, drafted Jonathan Mingo in the second round. And, you know, you wonder how is a rookie going to look in the early days of camp? Um, while will there, what is the learning curve? What is the developmental component of their game? And Jonathan Mango has made play after play. I've had said his name. I've seen him make plays. And he is look, not only ready to, right, looks the part in many ways. Steve Smith just put out a video about passing the torch. He looks the part. He's living up the bill. He is surprising in the way that it looks like, hey, he's not going to just be part of the Panthers' future at the position, but he is ready to be immediately a contributor to this offense. Yeah, that's uh, certainly been a surprise to many people. Uh, we've talked about it at nauseum at this point about the amount of uh, time he has gotten with the ones, and uh, he's made the most of it. He's made some catches. He's clearly getting separation. Uh, the the one thing I will caution about expectations on this, and this is something that's a bit contrary to one of our previous videos where we're going to be talking about the optimism around this offense, we also don't have our starting cornerbacks playing in these team drills. So the success of these wide receivers could very well be on the back of the second team cornerback situation. So I want to I wanna maybe set those expectations, but also – reward and acknowledge the success Mingo has had and the fact that he another guy that stood out to me is a guy that's hard to miss and I like to call him triple B these days about that business Brown and uh, we we Derek Brown uh, really a player that was came in first year Matt rule you know some people had some question marks about how how much you want to invest in a defensive tackle, how early they point to guys that around the league that have been drafted later on, and they like to highlight skilled players. You know, it's not defensive tackle. The big boys in the middle generally aren't the most sexy uh, draft picks. The Carolina Panthers had an atrocious run defense, though, at the end of Ron Rivera's tenure, and it was, a, you know, it's slowly gotten better. But Derek Brown has been the starting point of that transition, that turnaround. Some people are a little disappointed because I think the sacks, it's hard to see uh, how much he contributes. You know, they've wanted him to break, have more of a breakout. I think another thing is, is like, and maybe it has to do with the players that are around you at the same time. But I feel like Derek Brown's gotten better from year to year to year. And now he's in a year where he's going into the final year of his contract. They're going to pick up the fifth year option, to say the least. But he's about that business, and that about that business. Brown is always in the backfield. Maybe we should call him quadruple B. About that business, Brown in the backfield. Yeah, it looks like this new defense is going to really benefit Brown uh, this year, just based on the production he's had, and it's it certainly looks that way. And there's probably been more that he's done than we realize because of their inability to really create contact or create urgency with that quarterback. Um, but even with that, he has been in the backfield. He's been standing there for two seconds when Dalton was getting ready to let go of you know the ball. He was already there. It should have been a sack well before that. Dalton still ended up throwing the ball away. Uh, Brown is clearly going to be an impact player based on the way that they're playing this defense. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's something that we are all welcoming, especially him going into his uh, his uh, final year next year. Now that he has his fifth year option picked up, uh, he's he's playing for that extension. Who's our final standout? Our final standout is a bit of a surprise. I don't think anybody would have put this name on that list, um, but I think it's worthy of this because of the production that he's had, be it with the second team. That doesn't matter. I mean, the dude's come in here as a special teams player, a veteran in the league. He's come in and he's been an impact player. 
Shaq Thompson thinks he needs to see the field a lot this year, uh, not just on special teams, but on that defense. And that is uh, this new Kamu, and forgive me, I'm going to be completely butchering his name, but it's Kamu Grugier, Grugier Hill. Okay, now he's had an interception that was an impressive interception against Dalton, the only one of day one of training camp. Uh, he's had a impressive screen pass that he was able to shush out and stop it for a loss uh, on a play today or yesterday. Uh, he has been uh, impactful. He's been he showed up when his number was called, and I think that's all you can ask for for a guy who came in here with little expectation of starting on a defense. Three standouts from C three. You heard it here, Derek Brown in the house. Jonathan Mingo in the house, and Hill Krug, Brugler, Krugler Hill, 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 the guy is making some plays. We'd like to hear that. We need these all-around players. We need your all-around support. Smash the thumbs up button. Subscribe. We'll keep continue to bring the best fan content from training camp. C three here. Keep pounding.